Jesus fucking Christ, this is a joke, right? A what? A, a joke, Bubba! A joke. Oh, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. Jokes were outlawed several years ago. Too many parents' groups were getting offended. This is a genuine American peacemaker. It makes peace and encourages participants in a conflict to relax and shed their angry selves before reconvening around a conference table in HR to discuss problems. Well, how the hell am I supposed to get Poon Job to tell me where the next terror plot is with this thing? Hell, we need flamethrowers and duct tape and, ooh, waterboarding. Oh, and electric nipple clamps. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, that's the best part of it. Clamp them nipples! And naked human pyramids! Ooh! Uh, yes, we don't facilitate torture anymore. What? What the wet patch of piss are you talking about, soldier? Torture works! <laughs> Just watch this. Uh, hey, Uncle uh, Buddy. Oh, no, Uncle! <laughs> now say my uncle touched me funny. <laughs> Dick's uncle touched him funny. Hey, hey, you shut your mouth. That's me and Pawpaw's secret. Oh, mercy. I'm afraid you need to attend a sensitivity retraining seminar. Report to human and other equal species resources. Welcome, servicemen, women, and all other equal species. You know, serving the universe as guardians and protectors is not the simple job it once was. Not by a long shot. I mean, no longer can you shoot a person in the face and post the video of it on the internet. Now, we are conflict resolvers engaged in an equal partnership with all people. The word is non Violence. Let's do a little question as an example. Okay, if an alien horde has threatened your ship, how do you respond? Oh, 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 oh okay, you. Oh, um, damn. I liquidize them, the commander awards me a medal, we shower together, then drink till we black out, and I wake up in nothing but my socks. Uh, oh, wrong answer. Shame on you. Okay, who's oh, next? Oh, uh, yes. Wait. Okay, I ask them to stop. Good. And then I vaporize them. And then I feel bad about it afterwards. Good. Commander calls me a fag, and we shower and play volleyball. <sighs> well, it's better, but it's still wrong. Oh, I got this. I got this. Got this, motherfuckers. Let me think. Okay. I light a cigar. Eh, no, sorry. Smoking is illegal and bad for your health. What? Okay, okay. I beat their children, stick them on the front of my spaceship like a human shield, then nuke the entire fucking planet into next week. No, wrong answer. I'm afraid I'll have to revoke your medals and label you all as traitors. <gasps> what? I'm sorry, guys. I really what? am. You, you, you can't just do that. I am a patriot. My favorite beer even says so. And you, you're just a goddamn filthy fucking alien. <gasps> oh, I'm an equal opportunities co-worker. Besides, for your information, our president is an alien. What? <laughs> you gotta be shitting me. And that's what my great uncle taught me. True story. So the fact is, you're probably incorrect. <laughs> now, I'm not waffling here. I'm, I'm distracting. Trust me. I know I've never had a real job, but I still understand the economy a darn sight better than you do because of my deep, mellifluous voice. Say, uh, would you like a photograph of me in a swimsuit? <laughs> anyway, from now on, America is all about inclusion, people. And that means lots of taxation and, first and foremost, changing the American flag. So, let me unveil your new flag. My God! The president's a goddamn homo communist! And an alien! Come on, boys. Let's get the hell out of here. Booyah! But you haven't finished your sensitivity training. <laughs> I think we're about done with that shit. Sayonara, sweet cheeks. Yeah! Oh. oh, for fuck's sake. Guys, guys, come back! Can we talk about this? The suburbs and feel safe. Even then, bridge and tunnel was a dirty word. Just like flange. Ooh! Has somebody, anybody seen my medication for my angina? I mean you, boy! What's your name? Excuse me? Oh, be quiet. I didn't mean nothing by it. Come on, get over yourself. Hey, I can laugh at myself. What's wrong with you people? Seriously, I have angina. I could die of a heart attack any second. Where's my medication? I'll bet you stole it just to get high. Say what? 
Are you hillbilly? Uh, with that, the island of Algonquin was free to grow into the capital of a massive metropolis to expand beyond its borders. So what did they do? They built massive skyscrapers and looked down in the other boroughs, of course. Is there a doctor in there? Boy, get me a doctor. Please. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Ignorant cracker. Uh, just like today, it was a city of birth and death, of decay and renewal, of double-headers and double-enders. Finally, Liberty City was beginning to take its modern form. Overcrowded, smelly, but impressive and grandiose. Full of rich, unhappy people and poor, greedy people. All living cheek by jowl, like swine in a pen. But the city wasn't out of the woods yet. Soon, something would be invented that would change cities forever. Which we'll leave for next time on A History of Liberty. They're back, and they're front. Two bimbos. Yeah. Four massive breasts. Yeah. Two tiny brains. Conjoined twins. Season two. What happens when one finds religion and the other finds work as an exotic dancer? Find out only on CNT. Princess Lava Bubblegum! It's okay, it happens to a lot of guys. You never know what radiation exposure can do to your statement. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Look, please don't blog about this, baby, because I've never had this happen before. <gasps> oh, no! Yes, Master? Well, get your ass back down to the training facility! I know I'm late for the sexually arousing training montage. I was just, um, tending the garden. Are you even listening to me? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, Master. You're not just late, you're filthy. You have pollen all over your face. You fucking the prince again? <laughs> Master, why have you never told me about my parents? Ha, huh. you were abandoned here by your ninja parents after they died. They killed themselves for reasons we will discuss in a future episode, trust me. But for now, I just want you to think of yourself as the chosen one. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I didn't order an anime whore. I had lived by myself for many hundreds of years. Yet I was prevented from being near children after a bit of a misunderstanding. You'll find a blue square over my house on the internet now. And there's a thing that I can't discuss. It was just an innocent swimming lesson. Anyway, I raised you in the traditional way. Instilled you with the proper sense of a woman's place. Cha-ching! I trained you in the dark arts vital for fighting evil. I made lots of long-winded speeches that made no sense. As the wind flows, so the spirit departs. But then, what about memories? What are they? They are all we have left with. And then the stew just reads in the wind. Like the stars of the province in Hao Hu. They sound simply ephemeral, yet they are as dust in the hands of a man without legs. Such are the ancestral spirits that summon us all. What? What the fuck are you talking about, Master? Concentrate! Focus on my cod philosophical jibber jabber! <gasps> yes, I think you understand now. <laughs> uh, you are nearly one with the sword, yes, yeah. Soon you'll, you'll be ready for two swords at once. <laughs> uh, then you get pay extra. <laughs>
But how do I know I'm destined to be a great warrior? And why do I always have to wear such skimpy clothing for training? And why do I have to have a cute teleporting animal sidekick who never does anything useful? Saki! Oh, Saki, you made a mess, you annoying turd! Why? Merchandising, of course! You have all the makings of a great warrior. Eyes as big as saucers, natural pink hair, ridiculously huge breasts, a hairless vagina that you have no shame in exposing. Pencil thin arms, come on! You are ready for the final test. Hi, Kadai! <laughs> Now you are ready for a final awkward transformation montage! You are the only hope we have. Save your dead ninja parents' souls. Team up with a moody, angst-ridden, overly effeminate, androgynous, sword-wielding teen boy. Defeat the alien armada. Loop animation a lot to save production costs. Just like last time? Yes. Only this time, futurist Tokyo is not under threat from the forces of darkness. It's not? No! It's under the threat from the forces of evil! Now trust me, when I say this, I'm a total expert in this area. The forces of evil just can't stand the forces of darkness! They can't? No! Please, uh, one is East Coast, the other is West Coast. I mean, if you listen to the way that they sound, it's completely different. One doesn't even use instruments in the tracks. The other one is all like looping and like... <laughs> You know, like that stuff. They tried group therapy and everything, but it hasn't worked out. Let's head to the next scene because I'm talking nonsense again. <laughs> oh, yeah! Stupid bitch! <laughs> oh, <woo -hoo! laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! Hey, why didn't you help me? <laughs> oh, too horny to fight crime. Why do I have to say that line in every film? This is terrible! Merchandising! Oh, okay. That sounds artistic. Oh, excuse me. What's wrong with you? Are you blind? What? Well, yes. I'm so sorry, me and my big mouth. My sight was taken from me by the Shogun of Tepenyagi. It was this terrible hibachi accident. The onion volcano was too powerful, and my parents were burned alive. I'm a blind samurai. I'm unable to love. <laughs> You're not exactly a samurai. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, then you picked out the wrong costume. Shut up. This outfit is easy to make into a plastic doll. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to be a ninja, really. But, like, I mean, your parents are ninjas. And, like, they did. Which is, like, even better. So, like, they made me into, like, this goddamn samurai. Like. Yeah? Well, I'm a sex fantasy for creeps. <laughs> Oh, that sucks. Tell me about it. Anyway. You want to hear something that sucks, okay? The last thing I saw was a man flipping shrimp tails into his hat. Imagine that, okay? Get your mind around that. Flipping shrimp like on a cruise ship. Forever. For eternity. Terrible. What a strange way to go blind. Well, at least he won't be hard to find. I could help you get revenge on the shrimp tosser who took your sight. But it won't be easy. He has restaurants at strip malls across the world. What's your quest? Visit the graveyard! Um, I have to visit the graveyard. And pick up a carton of redwood lights on your way home. Remember, lights, not the menthols. I am jonesing. <laughs> it's so sad. This isn't the right graveyard, but... It's the only one I could find! <laughs> pee pee time!
Okay, I'm just gonna stand here and look moody, okay? Fair enough! You're blind and you're dressed wrong! Shut the fuck up, bitch! You're jealous! Come on, let's get out of here before anything interesting happens! Asian culture is so much better than America. I totally love this place. I think I was Japanese in a past life. Plus, I have a tiny weenie. What? Ah! Oh no! You fancy machine come alive! It's a terrible cliche! <gasps> this is it! The final fight sequence! Oh, another fucking montage! Help! I'm poorly dubbed and we're running out of funds for translation! This story makes no sense! Hiya! Take that! Ooh, I'll scratch you! Dead body freezer box telephone! Yes! Translation problem! Uh-oh! Monster Monster Ravey time! Remember your training! Merchandising! No! Submitting to bizarre male fantasies of women in a completely non-misogynistic and sexually healthy way! No, I never got that part in training. Hey, get out of there! Well, look, just lie back and think about merchandising. Holy ninja, you can fit all of that up there! Help! You're on your own now, I'm sorry. Blind boy, whose name I can't remember, help! I can't, my translator is a maroon. I'm sorry, girl. Hiya! This is horse chat! I'm being raped by a robot and helped by a blind jump with a dodgy translator while my master is a sick old pervert and I'm completely out of montages. This calls for a cliffhanger. Saki! Oh, Speedball makes Saki sick. Help me, someone! Hey, what about my dead parents' souls? Oh, shit! The script writers forget about them again! Oh, boy! Join us next week for another episode of Princess Robot Bubblegum! And don't forget to pick up the feature-length film that went straight to DVD! The saga continues in Princess Robot Bubblegum and the Kitty Lover Shiny Bikini Ninja Super Party Time Dimensional Dragon Hole! And pick up the video game available for handhelds! Princess Robot Bubblegum LXVII Repress Destiny Sparkle The Action RPG Oh, shit! Ah, uh, too many numbers! And of course, trading cards, uncensored manga, and collectible figurines for lonely people to stick on their desks in lieu of friends. Plus, an assortment of other quality branded merchandise. Too horny to fight crime. Visit princessrobotbubblegum.com. Rich guys make me so wet. Mary Rich, it's all that matters. The season finale of Gold Diggers of Liberty City is next week. Oh, Daddy! The competition gets stiff mm. on CNT. Tonight, in a time of unimaginable wealth and poverty, incredible drunkenness, and immigrants gone wild, the city of the future takes a look in the mirror of the past and says, what the fuck are you looking at? And then exposes itself in public. Yes. The remarkable story of Liberty City continues in A History of Liberty Part 2. Building big, ripping people off. Major support for this series is brought to you by the Bank of Liberty, who say, thanks for the bailout, America. We needed to make yacht payments and to keep our offshore accounts topped up. If you look at the faces that make up the palette of Liberty City today, literally millions of faces of different hue and tone and hairiness from all corners of the earth, seething with hate, raging with fear, boiling with anger at the high prices, corrupt police and strippers with annoying Russian accents, then it can seem like not much has changed in Liberty City in 150 years. Still, they came in hordes to a place that hates you as soon as you arrive. And that attitude is what makes Liberty City the remarkably putrid yet insanely overpriced metropolis it is today. We continue our epic story of A History of Liberty. My uh, great-great-grandfather, Seamus, uh, left Ireland in 1825 and arrived by boat in Liberty City. 
he was stunned. Uh, I mean, he'd, he'd heard about this this magical place with like gold coins and gay unicorns and a lot of rainbows and like policemen who didn't wear any trousers. But what he actually found was this this sweatshop construction job. In those days, things were very different, you know. Uh, construction workers actually worked, instead of drinking during lunch and setting up inflatable rats and sexually assaulting strangers. Nice tits! You're disgusting! By 1830, Liberty City was being flooded with Irish immigrants who were told that American girls were easy to get into bed when they heard a foreign accent. Yeah, it's true. The birds are easy. <laughs> my family's lived in America for generations, and it's because of my pride and heritage and desperation for some kind of identity that I fake this accent all the time. Soon, the trickle of Irish immigration became a flood. The Irish, who were so busy drinking and chasing rainbows and sleeping with midgets, forgot how to grow potatoes. A famine spread across the land. How do you mess up growing potatoes, for crying out loud? It's a tuber, for goodness sake. One eighth of Ireland's population came to Liberty City in about, oh, 15 minutes. Local businessmen loved it. Finally, they had found them a group of people they could pay less than they pay the blacks. It's about competition, a free market. Just like today, some people look down on the Irish. Streets at night were full of ruffians. Riots broke out every evening. There were working class riots against the upper class. Anti-Irish riots, anti-black riots, anti-English riots, soccer riots, pacifist riots, girl-on-girl -girl hot riots. Before the invention of television, most people had nothing more interesting to do of an evening than setting fire to their neighbors. At the same time, you begin to see this incredible migration from the south, migrating just like birds, shitting on everything and making too much noise. People from the south headed up to Liberty City because they'd heard now, hey, there's this place that's even more racist than where we live. And you can go there and hate people from all over the world, freely and openly, like a true American. The energy of the city would break over you like a fat woman climaxing. A sweaty, heaving mass that cannot be stopped. A disgusting, sticky and smelly underbelly screaming in your ear, drowning your soul. And afterwards you feel terrible about yourself and promise never to drink again, hoping no one saw the disgusting trollop you left the bar with. You going out, baby? To satisfy the carnal desires of the population, the city's first newspapers appeared in the late 1830s. Residents instantly demanded less political coverage, preferring stories of moral degeneracy, crime, sex, muggings, and especially rapes, which were always on page three. The Liberty Tree published its first edition in 1835, and every time they would expose how dishonest politicians were robbing people blind, the public would criticize the media for institutional bias. Anyone who badmouths politicians or big business has an agenda. Idiot liberals, usually drug users and open homosexuals, always unduly concerned about the truth. Scared of being left out of all the fun, early bankers showed they could destabilize society as well as anyone. In 1857, the markets of the exchange collapsed. You had huge panic in the financial district as everyone realized a bunch of assholes in suits had duped America with a giant pyramid scheme in which they made out like bandits and everybody else got shit on. The poor got poorer and there was no social security or Medicare to help people. Yes, sir, those were truly grand times when we let the weak die in the streets rather than prop them up. It's what America's all about. Every man for himself and steal what you can when no one's looking. To help the city feel better about itself, one of the largest public works projects in history came to completion. Middle Park. Oh yeah, it was really remarkable. They took a patch of open land and put a wall around it and spent a lot of public money calling it a park. The park was another example of unparalleled American ingenuity. Copy something from Europe and pretend you invented it. The builders of Middle Park hoped that the classes could now mingle and buy drugs from each other. 
However, African Americans were excluded from the park entirely. <laughs> what? I didn't say anything. No, not much. You know, only elegant carriages were allowed. Working class vehicles like low riders and hybrids were barred entirely. The park had a list of rules a mile long. No picnics, blowjobs, walking on the grass, camp exercise, no baseball by schoolboys, and creepy old men were given an entire section where they could roll their balls around. But broker residents had a problem. Rowing to work across the Humboldt River was abysmal, and rowing home drunk resulted in many naval accidents. Plus, local manic depressives complained there was nothing tall enough to jump off and kill yourself. Mm. So construction began on the Broker Bridge. It was a boom for organized crime, who ensured that non-union workers were taken care of, and gave entrepreneurial residents of Liberty City a new place to dump bodies. At the same time, a dark cloud was growing over the fledgling nation. The rise of Liberty City was a menace to the southern way of life. Focusing on education, arts, interacting with people of other races was such a threat to the incredible civilization of the South that some states began to consider seceding from the Union. These were true patriots. They loved America so much, they wanted to leave it. Some residents of Liberty City were Southern sympathizers during the Civil War. They liked the idea of drinking a 12-pack of crap beer each night, eating at breakfast buffets, and listening to rock bands that played two-hour guitar solos. In 1863, the first draft was announced to bolster Northern troops. The citizens were enraged, drunk and angry, Armed with iron bars, ninja swords, survival knives, and Chinese stars, the draft riots began. An emergency message was sent out via telegram. Then, the telegraph lines were cut. The wealthiest nation in the world was in anarchy. And not the good kind of anarchy, where you cop a feel in the mosh pit at a punk rock concert. Mobs formed and to show the South that they had nothing on being two-faced bigots. Rioters in Liberty City went and burned down an orphanage full of black children. People misunderstand. But it's a culture of heritage, not hate. You can see that in our Civil War reenactments in the park. We reach out to the black community, but nobody is interested in learning about history by getting the tar whooped out of them and then sat on fire and shot. Strange, really, when you think of it. Yeah, it's strange, all right, huh? Nobody wants to spend a Saturday in the park getting lynched by dorks wearing tunics. Soon, horrible liberal musicians made protest songs asking America, Civil War, what is it good for? And America said, we don't have TV yet, so it keeps things interesting. The Civil War was the crossroads of our nation, and at that crossroads was a truck stop, a fireworks stand, and a place to buy rebel flag souvenirs and lighters with naked ladies on them. And one of those machines where you put in a quarter and that claw comes down and tries to pick up a stuffed pig, but it never really does. So you go out to your truck and a lot lizard is out there and she says, I'll blow you for twenty dollars. And you let her. Then you kill her and burn the body. That's the American experience in a nutshell. The reason this war lasted for years was it took so damn long to pack a rifle. You know, we Southerners moved slow and methodically. We chat a bit, tell a racist joke, go fishing, pack a rifle, take a nap. And sometime in the afternoon, you know, when you get around to it, you try to find you a Yankee or colored person to shoot. We never had a chance, really. But we'll rise again, I promise you that. After quite a few years of hard fighting and cheap novels and terrible speeches, the war was over. Everyone could go back to the peacetime pursuits of mutual self-loathing and throwing bags full of turds at freaks. It was a time of leisure and rebuilding in the North as carpetbaggers had destroyed the great civilization of the South. A civilization they misunderstood terribly.
Ha! The reason they're called red states is because of the bloodshed trying to get a bunch of hillbillies to act like decent human beings. Uh, okay. Residents wanted to relax after having won the war and celebrating with massive tailgate parties. So the new art of leisure began in Firefly Island, a quiet seaside district that featured hot dog eating competitions, condoms floating in the surf, and roller coasters that derailed and maimed people. Plus, freak shows where you could point and laugh and make dwarves and hairy women cry. Oh, that one's my favorite. Ah. Oh. With the war over, residents of Liberty City returned to amusing themselves by binge drinking, swimming with their clothes on, and watching magic shows where people would search for a tiny man hidden in a woman's nether regions. Liberty City has always been full of massive cunts after all. Huh, for once I agree. And the city began work on a new project for its leisure class. A place of orgies and depravity drug addiction and perversity, anxiety and sweat. The Liberty City Subway. Nothing unified residents of a city more than being squashed into one another on a subway train as they rushed from one important appointment at the hat makers to another at the witch burning. It's disgusting. People mixing together like some great cosmopolitan clusterfuck. Preserve differences. My leg is going numb just thinking about it! Liberty City went crazy for underground trains. The first station opened in 1874 and was inaugurated by throwing buckets of urine on the platforms. People loved it, although there was nowhere to go as the first train did not get built for another five years. So they had to wait in the station for a very long time. So with this and the Broker Bridge, People were free to live in the suburbs and realize the joys of commuting. Apathy, alienation, shitty radio morning shows, and car key parties. And they were allowed to live amongst their own kind in the suburbs and feel safe. Even then, bridge and tunnel was a dirty word, just like flange. Ooh, has somebody, anybody seen my medication for my angina? I mean you, boy. What's your name? Excuse me? Oh, be quiet. I didn't mean nothing by it. Come on. Get over yourself. Hey, I can laugh at myself. What's wrong with you people? Seriously, I have angina. I could die of a heart attack any second. Where's my medication? I'll bet you stole it just to get high. Say what? Are you hillbilly? Uh, with that, the island of Algonquin was free to grow into the capital of a massive metropolis to expand beyond its borders. So what did they do? They built massive skyscrapers and looked down in the other boroughs, of course. Is there a doctor in there? Boy, get me a doctor, please. Ah! <laughs> Ignorant cracker. Uh, just like today, it was a city of birth and death, of decay and renewal, of double-headers and double-enders. Finally, Liberty City was beginning to take its modern form. Overcrowded, smelly, but impressive and grandiose. Full of rich, unhappy people and poor, greedy people, all living cheek by jowl, like swine in a pen. But the city wasn't out of the woods yet. Soon, something would be invented that would change cities forever. Which we'll leave for next time on A History of Liberty. They're back and they're front. Two bimbos. Yeah. Four massive breasts. Yeah. Two tiny brains. Conjoined twins. Season two. What happens when one finds religion and the other finds work as an exotic dancer? Find out only on CNT. Princess Lava Bubblegum!
It's okay, it happens to a lot of guys. You never know what radiation exposure can do to your statement. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Look, please don't blog about this, baby, because I never had this happen before. <gasps> oh, no! Yes, Master? Well, get your ass back down to the training facility! I know I'm late for the sexually arousing training montage. I was just, um, tending the garden. Are you even listening to me? I'm sorry I'm late, Master. You're not just late, you're filthy. You have pollen all over your face. You fucking the plants again? <laughs> Master, why have you never told me about my parents? Ha! Huh. You were abandoned here by your ninja parents after they died. They killed themselves for reasons we will discuss in a future episode, trust me. But for now, I just want you to think of yourself as the chosen one. through over thorns with a knife in your mouth. Exactly. You bite back the tears with the blood running down your face. Mm. This analogy is for life, and it's all covered in my next book. Crawling through the garden of lavender and roses over thorn with a knife in your mouth and slightly aroused. Yes. Listen, I teach you, Travis. You live in Liberty City, right, uh, Tudor? Uh, uh yeah. But, but how do you know that? Well, let me tell you this pretty soon, in about five minutes, you will hear a knock on your door, <laughs> and three guys will be there. Hmm. The first rule of violence is, don't always commit the crime yourself. Now, if you are choking on the sheriff and waiting for the posse to come, or making the Cyclops cry, it's no matter, because sometimes we all have to wait in the dark. Discipline. I tell it to Jeremy all the time. Discipline. It's discipline. Don't let the images Jeremy, of your stepfather, hound you. Don't, don't let him. Don't tell no, him no, about No, 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 you're a man. It's okay, it's okay. What happened is in the past. You're still a man. Okay. Don't worry. You are alone. Alone with your heartbeat. Life quickly spirals out, to, out of control, Jerry. Hmm. I mean, come on. One day, you look in the mirror, and then suddenly, you just punch it. Fuck! And at that moment, you look at yourself in the mirror, and you see the broken reflection, and you, you feel empty inside. Pass. Pass. Come on, let's, let's get back on track here. That's right. When you fight the game of your life, punch your opponent in the liver, and that is pow, right there. That's the liver. You have to have the wings of an eagle, the body of a lion, and the tail of a howler monkey. People say, hey, listen, I don't want to study martial arts. The problem with martial arts is the years of training and celibacy. You can't fuck. It's out of, out of the fucking question. It's well known that ninjas aren't allowed to touch themselves or they lose their edge. And if you lose your edge, not good. Now, this gives you great focus and precision when you're cutting off someone's head. My method is I teach you how to feel this anger. Obliterate. Obli obliterate. Obliterate your opponent and ruin his chances at reproduction. And you know what? You're gonna get the girl in the end. It's a great story. You know what else is a great story, Jeremy? Well, I really like Little Red Riding Hood. World War II is a great story. Vietnam, the Falkland Islands, Australia. Man with bare hands taking care of business. Setting people on fire. <laughs> Burning their faces. And that's all the time we have for this time. This time. This has been Bass and Jeremy in the men's room. Join us next time in the men's room. Only sissies wash their hands. Don't miss the next episode of Undertaker. The best Undertakers from across the nation compete for the most dignified end for your loved one. Grandparents, mothers-in-law, pets, or lawyers. It's dignity all the way as we bring competition to man's final resting place. Undertaker, only on Weasel. Republican Space Rangers. Intergalactic war on terror. But don't worry about it. 
collateral damage our era. Cause when you can hate, we're spreading freedom and liberty. Sometimes, Sometimes we, we kill, kill with undue undo glee. Oh, is that your home? Sorry! Gotta complete the mission. And possibly deny extraordinary additions. Spreading American values. Sometimes, Sometimes you gotta, gotta bomb an orphanage or two. Republican Space Rangers! With a universe full of terrorists trying to infiltrate America, who do you call? Republican Space Rangers! They are Butch, the Commander, and Dick. When we last met the Rangers, they were bravely defending the borders of our universe from the horrors of illegal aliens. Republican Space Rangers! Kill first, film it, and stick it on the internet later! Episode 456, Trouble Brewing Down South. I tell you what, boys, there is nothing like barbecue space chicken to make you feel patriotic. Gentlemen, we are on the front lines of freedom right here. This is where our civilization ends and a universe of untold savagery begins. Any illegal alien immigrants try to sneak through this checkpoint, our standing orders are to deport them permanently to H.E. Double Toothpicks! <laughs> Amen! Hoorah! <laughs> Shut up and get tender, bitches! Hey, uh, how come I can hear that gunshot? You know, sound don't travel through no space. Huh? Oh, god damn it, Butcher! Fucking up our character continuity! You're supposed to be dumb as sticks! I'm just saying, all them space movies you hear, you know, with them lasers and ships flying by? But you can't hear nothing in space for real. Space is a vacuum cleaner full of dark matter and impossibly dense. I got some impossibly dense dark matter for you. Mm -mm. Dinner's ready, boys. <laughs> oh, holy snapping asshole! Hey, look at you, mister. Fucking self-improvement elitist with your fancy learning. Hey, look. I got all the educations I need. It's called a gun. Holster that weapon, soldier! Need I remind you that dark matter is what we're supposed to stop from creeping into the blessed homeland? Butch, what are you, some kind of elite son of a bitch now? Yeah, living up in your ivory tower listening to your jam bands and your rap music and whatnot? Are you social networking on me, boy? Uh, Commander, I, I read all this on them internet. Internets? So help me, you better not have yourself a blog, boy. The internets? Well, she ain't for learning. She's for posting unsubstantiated lies on message boards, calling people fags and fart and shit. Do you read me? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, and chatting with underage girls with large hairy hands and Adam's apples and thick ankles that don't shave. Uh, anyway, you two shut your beer holes and be on the lookout for illegal immigrants. They're a scourge, I tell you, gentlemen. Why, when my people came to this country, the last thing they wanted was to be joined by a lot of foreigners once the place was full. It's just like the Constitution says. We the freaking people! I repeat, we the freaking motherfucking people! Uh-oh! Hey, we got a live one there, fellas! Whoa! Incoming combat! Lock and load, prepare to fire, boys! On my command! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Oh, baby! You try to soil this distant outpost of the homeland with your funny language of merengue hoo-ha, and I'll shoot a load right in your fart box, boy! Uh... yeah. Anyway, it's another great day for spreading freedom, boys! What say we hit the hay? Oh, but before we go... Julio, Ivan, Ming Ho, get your sorry tentacled arses out here on the double! Si, senor commander. Oh, Julio, 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 we said it a million fucking times. Let me be very clear. God speaks English. My Bible is in English. I am English. This am Englandish. Speak fucking English! Si, si, sorry, senor bossman. England very pretty. He is very pretty! Cut the crap, the two of you! England is full of homos! Anyways, listen up, Julio! While me and the real heroes catch some Z's, you zeros give the ship a little cleaning and a good once-over! 
You people are good at that, aren't you? Listen up, my alien friend. The American dream begins under the table. I'm taxed at $1.50 an hour. You don't like it? I'm calling immigration come morning. Si, sí, senor. All right, now, vamos, amigos. <laughs> Damn heathen language makes my mouth taste like turd just speaking it. Hit the fucking rack, boys! Uh, Commander, you asleep? What? Uh, grab your socks, it's a right. What? what the hell are you doing in my bunk, soldier? Hi. Uh, I got cold, uh, and I keep thinking I hear crickets, you know. Oh, I... god damn it, Dick, those ain't crickets. That's my new bangle sleep machine. So you play soothing sounds that help me sleep. Comforted things like the sound of crickets, or rifles cocking, or... Aliens cowering or flags unfurling. Now get your ass back to your bunk and get some shut eye, soldier. That's an order. Leave my teddy bear. Oh, thank you so much for coming. My family is starving. So I, I brought you some beans. Y'all people like that, right? Beans. Anything. Oh, I'm so confused. But why? Well, you're filthy alien scum, and I got a mandate here from the Lord God Almighty and Weasel News to kill you, but I, I just want me a new friend. Will you be my little buddy? Well, I... Uh, I, I don't know. I, what do we have in common? I like reading and art and philosophy and studying the universe. What do you like? I like TV and breakfast buffets and mega churches and rodeo and killing people. Only... I don't really like that last part. I'm so confused, alien scum buddy. I'm all alone! <laughs> no, 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 please, please. What about the other two psychotic rednecks in there? The one with the murderous rage and the inbred one always complaining about his sweaty groin? They seem like your kind of people. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, uh, I like Butch and the Commander and all that, but we don't have so much in common no more. That's because we ain't but fucking queers! Oh, shit. <gasps> Unlike you and this intellectual elitist cocksucker! I beg your pardon. Consorting with the enemy, huh? Giving him comfort, are ya? You might as well be pink socking the motherfucker! Hoorah! Hey, y'all been there since beans, haven't you? Hey, excuse me, but how can I be homosexual? I had 14 kids. That is, until you killed most of them! Exactly, motherfucker! Natural selection's what we call it! The way the good lord intended it! Would have been all of them dead if my plasma gun hadn't locked. It's all a clever design, my alien friend! Teach the controversy! Hey! Stop staring at my penis. Oh, please. Fuck you, you fudge-packing alien scum! Get this straight, boy! I ain't marrying you! Because it's... it's illegal! And... and fuck you, Butch! Hey, I bet that alien's demon seed is gonna burn its way into your brain! It's got control of you, Butch! No, Dick! Commander, he, he, he's just my... my friend! Your friend?! Harsh shit, you gay-ass motherfucker! Dick! New orders! We got queers to kill! Butch likes alien cock! Uh, Butch, hurry this way! Hey, Butch! Just cause you suck cock, it don't make you gay as long as the lights are off! I grew up on a farm! Where are these homos? Oh! There they are! They're getting away! I can't believe I've become a traitor! We're like outlaws now! You gonna call me the bandit? Oh, they'll probably hang you! Oh, no! I didn't join the Space Marines for this! I signed up to protect Earth and kill foreigners and have video games made about me! Life is complicated. I know, I saw that commercial. Oh man, it's them! We got a Smokey on her backside, little buddy! Have mercy! Listen up, Butch! Your backside is really gonna be smoking when I'm done with you, do you read me over? Yeah! You stop your poon hanging around with insurgents! You are threatening our way of life! You shall be liquidated like bad debt! With no rescue bill inside, motherfucker! Insurgents? 
Prepare to die! Oh, piss off, dickhead. Watch this! I call it Operation Shitstorm in a Basket! Oh! Oh, shit! All systems are offline! Ah! This can mean only one thing! What? Cyber terrorism! <laughs> Butch! We're running out of air in here! It's like that choking game I like to play with my dad! Only it's real! We've got to save your friends! They called me gay! Maybe I'll just let them die! It's called transference, buddy. It's basic Jungian psychology, from your planet! We have to save those morons or we'll be just as bad as they! Well, okay then. Hey! Y'all need to get in the stamina vesicle airlock and hit the eject button! We'll catch you! I'm going out like I began! Hoorah, motherfucker! Will the Commander and Dick explode in the vacuum of space? Will Butch become a granola-eating liberal pinko? Will the Commander offend any other minorities? Taking a handicapped woman against her will! Will the alien sign a book deal with a women's magazine discussing conflict resolution in your marriage? Will liberals ever stop hating America? Find out next time, only on Republican Space Rangers! Republican Space Rangers! Tomorrow, only on Weasel, a terrorism special. Why fear is your best friend. Find out, are helicopters really safe? How to tell if undocumented workers in your neighborhood are really a terror cell? And how to protect yourself with this city's appalling restriction on gun ownership. A special look at day trips to nearby states that sell over-the-counter assault weapons. The Weasel Terrorism Special. Weasel News. Standing up to the liberal agenda, one issue at a time. Republican Space Rangers! Intergalactic war on terror. We don't worry about collateral damage or error. Cause we're nuke and hate, we're spreading freedom and liberty. Sometimes we kill with undue glee. Oh, was that your home? Sorry! Gotta complete the mission. And possibly deny extraordinary additions. Spreading American values. Sometimes, Sometimes you, you gotta, gotta bomb an orphanage or two. Republican Space Rangers! With idiot liberals working to undermine America, who do you call? Republican Space Rangers! They are Butch, Commander, and Dick. We join the ranger's ship, floating in an uncharted nebula deep in the black depths of space. Beer stain detected. Vomit detected. Baby batter detected. <laughs> Oh, huh? Lord, anybody see a cat running around here? Uh, what cat? Man, the one is shit in my mouth. I don't know. Oh, god damn, it's hotter than the chubby girl's undercarriage in here. I got fucking vapor locked in my shorts. You, tin can, what the hell is going on here anyway? The atmospheric regulator is offline. You've been in cryosleep for eight years. Eight years? Dick, you dumb shit! You programmed the cryogenic alarm clock wrong in the boring part of the last episode! It was supposed to be eight hours, not eight years! Huh? Ow! Ow! Oh, hey! Why are y'all staring at me? Oh no! I must have put the sun lamp sitting on for eight years too! Now I'm a metrosexual! I ought to send your fake bank ass out the airlock! Log into the ship's computer, soldier sissy pants! That's an order! <laughs> Sir, I forgot my damn password! Now we'll never get the ship started! Hey, Dick, try Doggy Balls 4. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah. Uh, how do you spell 4? Uh, no, no, that ain't it! Uh, all right, uh, give a clown pocket a whirl. No, 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 not that either! Try Pink Harmonica. 
No, take, don't. Take over, fat princess. No. Oh, what the fuck was it, boy? I think the password has been reset. Shit. Allow me to type it in. Huh? What the hell is that word? That looks like Latin faggot shit to me. Must be one of them random letter generators. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, no! It has been eight years! Everyone's defriended me! I've missed out on all that blogging and telling people what I hate about standing in line at the grocery store! Shut <laughs> your bar hole, super shopper! Social networking is for queers! A real man hates himself silently and his friends openly! Plus, you were getting too goddamn carried away with that shit! <laughs> Say cheese! Smile, dirt star! Oh! God damn it, Butch! Uh, hey y'all, we have orders to return to Earth immediately. Hoorah! In fact, we's a little late. These orders are five years old. I don't gotta hear that twice, boys. Let's hit it! I can't wait to head back to the good old U.S. of A and make me some motorboat sounds between a couple of genuine American fake silicone hooters! Booyah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's me and my mother. <laughs> Woo ah! All right. Hey, fellers! I bet they make a bronze statue of us as heroes! <laughs> Tell you what, my action figure better have a four-foot inflatable cock, cause I hey. wanna... Hey! Hey, where is everybody? Where's the welcome party? Who's this guy? Welcome back, service people. Here, have some medals. Your country is proud of you. Please sign here to give up your rights to a pension. It's your patriotic duty. A lot has changed on Earth and the military in the past eight years. First, we'll need your weapons, boys. What? Man, these must be outdated. Oh, I can't wait to get my new gun. Y'all have one that'll shatter an alien's final column, but leave them conscious so I can go them before crushing the life out of them with my boot. Yeah, yeah, or, or, or a gun that blows the enemy's clothes off like a like a nude bomb, yeah. you know? <laughs> then you'd know if the bad guys have a gun. You shut it, soldier. Everyone knows terrorists hide guns in their butts. <laughs> That's why you look there first. Uh, no, actually, gentlemen, here are your new weapons. What in the high holy hell is this? Where's the trigger? That's an excellent question. It is a non-lethal conflict resolution device. Too many enemy combatants were harmed through crude projectile-based weaponry. These project positive affirmations that help you bridge the gap and solve matters peacefully. Well, give me the goddamn thing. It's... Not... Oh! Jesus fucking Christ! This is a joke, right? A what? A, a joke, Bubba! A joke. Oh, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. Jokes were outlawed several years ago. Too many parents' groups were getting offended. This is a genuine American peacemaker. It makes peace and encourages participants in a conflict to relax and shed their angry selves before reconvening around a conference table in HR to discuss problems. Well, how the hell am I supposed to get Poon Job to tell me where the next terror plot is with this thing? Hell, we need flamethrowers and duct tape and, ooh, waterboarding. Oh, and electric nipple clamps. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, that's the best part of it. them nipples. And naked human pyramids. Ooh. Uh, yes, we don't facilitate torture anymore. What? What the wet patch of piss are you talking about, soldier? Torture works! <laughs> Just watch this. Uh, hey, Uncle uh, Buddy. Oh, no, Uncle! <laughs> now say my uncle touched me funny. <laughs> Dick's uncle touched him funny. Hey, hey, you shut your mouth. That's me and... Drowning, you feel empty inside. Are with... You going... The liver... Riz... And... You can't fall... On page. Or... Time they would expose how dishonest politicians were robbing people blind, the public would criticize the media for institutional bias. Anyone who badmouths politicians or big business has an agenda. Idiot liberals, usually drug users and open homosexuals, always unduly concerned about the truth. Scared of being left out of all the fun, early bankers showed they could destabilize society as well as anyone. In 1857, the markets of the exchange collapsed. You had huge panic in the financial district as everyone realized a bunch of assholes in suits had duped America with a giant pyramid scheme in which they made out like bandits and everybody else got shit on. The poor got poorer 
and there was no Social Security or Medicare to help people. Yes, sir, those were truly grand times, when we let the weak die in the streets rather than prop them up. It's what America's all about. Every man for himself and steal what you can when no one's looking. To help the city feel better about itself, one of the largest public works projects Starving. So, uh, uh, of mutual self loan needs to keep a destroy like reading it. Ha! It's like deep part. Okay. The one with the murder and inf and all that I destroyers than intellectual. Dwarf using themselves by being.